episode 15 of No One Asked Us. Thanks for joining us. I'm Craig Choate. That's Logan Lee. Um, follow us on all social media channels. Of course, like, follow, subscribe at No One Asked Us Pod on Twitter, at Craig W. Choate for me, at the Logan Lee for him. No one asked us 2021 at gmail.com for all you listeners out there that can't see the YouTube, the beautiful YouTube page and our two beautiful faces. Um, that's where you can find us on social media. Uh, Logan, we're 15 episodes in. Can you believe it? I cannot believe it, Craig. I cannot. It's been a, it's been a crazy 15 weeks. Essentially. We have not missed a week yet. So yeah. we haven't exactly had the most consistent schedule, uh, but we have not missed a week yet. So, so that's pretty cool. So congratulations. Happy 15 episodes to you. Um, you failed to mention it. Uh, for those that are watching us on YouTube, you see that we're wearing two very different shirts, but <laughs> we'll have a blooper <laughs> at the end of the episode. <laughs> well, we'll include a little bit of what happened when we both logged on to Zoom here <laughs> a few minutes ago to start this show, uh, realizing that we were both wearing the exact same shirt. Um, <laughs> oh my God. We and did not, not stop like, laughing for five minutes. <laughs> it's <laughs> it not like great. it's a... Illinois short shirt or a SIU shirt. It's just a plain green t-shirt and we both <laughs> both had it on. I will include that uh, blooper at the end oh of the episode God. on I'm YouTube la- probably. I'm still Sorry. laughing. For those um, listening to us on Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast, it won't be as funny. So we probably won't include it on that, but it'll be on, Twitter, on YouTube. Don't worry. <laughs> um, we will include that. And before we get too far into it, happy Memorial day to everyone. Um, Hope you guys are enjoying the day, but, but let's not forget that what the day is about. Thank you to all those that have served and, and especially those families that um, are dealing with what Memorial Day is for. So happy Memorial Day to everyone out there. Let's pop right in. Um, some pretty big news with Illini basketball, kind of the biggest important news for us um, this week. Kofi Coburn, of course, as all of you know, put his name in the NBA draft um did not hire an agent or anything kept his NCAA elig- eligibility but uh, a couple days ago Andrew Slater uh retweeted Kofi's declarement is that a word <laughs> the, the tweet declaration word. declaration that's it <laughs> um <laughs> retweeted Kofi's declaration to the NBA draft and said that Kofi will not return to Illinois he is going to keep his name in the draft Kofi himself has not said anything per se, but Kofi retweeted that tweet. So for me, that means, yep, that's true. Um, is that what that, is that how you take that? Yeah, no, I think it's a very strange way to announce that that's yes. happening, but yeah, I mean, unless he's just, I don't, I don't know why you would retweet that if that wasn't accurate information that was being put out about you. So, yeah. uh, I mean, it's not like it's a shock to anybody. Um, you know, that's kind of what we've been expecting this whole time. We've all thought there was a chance that he might come back, but we've, we've known it probably wasn't going to be likely. So when that did come across, um, again, not a surprise, but the way it kind of happened, maybe so more or less, because we still have some time, right, before this deadline. There, there's a lot of uncertainties and a lot of wacky deadlines and things going on now with with NBA draft stuff and with the transfer portal. Like, there's just a lot of moving pieces um, in the greater college basketball landscape right now. Um, so I don't think we're quite, quite to that deadline. Um, but either way, um, if, the, if it is the case, which it sounds like it is, you know, wish Kofi nothing but the best. Um, you know, obviously would have loved to see him back because I think Illinois would have had a really good shot to, you know, not contend for a national title with him, but, you know, be in the mix for at least the conference title, that type of thing. Without Kofi on the court, you got a ways to go. So, yeah. uh, but again, best of luck to him. Uh, wish him nothing but, nothing but the best, um, but not really a shock to me or to you or to really anybody. Right. Um, the the deadline that Illinois needed or, or the, the important date for Kofi was July 7th. Because like like Logan said, there are, there are a bunch of different deadlines. There's an NCAA deadline. There's an NBA deadline. There's, there's all kinds of different days. But for him to be eligible to play at Illinois, he had to pull his name out and say, I'm coming back to Illinois by July 7th. So um, the sooner the better for Illinois, obviously. I mean, if it would have dragged out to July 7th, I don't think we would have known the roster at all. And then if he decides to 
uh, to keep his name in at Illinois, then they're without a they're without a five. They're without a post player. So now they can move on and, and kind of say to these all, all these transfers that they're targeting, be like, all right, we have this hole in the roster in the post. We need your help. You can come in. You can fill Kofi's old spot. So there, there's this is nothing but good for Illinois. Even though Kofi's leaving, obviously, right. that's not good. But it's good that he did this now. But still, he hasn't said anything. No. So – these are, these are still just reports until he says it. And until, um, and this is what a lot of people are saying. This was the same thing with IO last year. He was 99.9% gone last year. And then they, the day comes around and and he comes back. So, so we'll see. Um, I think he probably keeps his name in. I like to keep up with mock drafts, even NBA that, that I don't follow as much per se, but I do like to keep up with mock drafts, especially this year with IO who's going to get because you're, because you're a Suns fan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, big exactly. win today. Okay, I Got think it. they were winning. Uh, I don't know, um, but I have not seen Kofi's name in like any mock drafts. So he has to go to the combine and perform really well. Um, and I don't know if that will change now because he he has said he is keeping his name in the draft through other people. He said that. I don't know if if scouts and NBA teams were like, well, we don't know if this guy's coming, so we're not gonna we're not gonna scout this guy this guy. Now he said he's focused on the NBA and they might focus a little bit more on scouting him and he might shoot up some boards. I think he makes a team because you can't teach size, the old, as the saying goes, and he has plenty of that. Um, his game doesn't really fit the NBA anymore, but the, somebody will take a, take a shot on him. And, yeah. and, he, and he could be a double-digit rebounding guy in the NBA, and there's always a role for that. So no. uh, good for Kofi. Uh, don't know where he'll get drafted, if he'll get drafted, but I do expect to see him in the NBA next season if he keeps his name in the draft. No, I, I fully agree. I fully agree. As you said, I, I don't think his game really um, is what the NBA is about right now. But again, as you said, I think there will be a place for him. He can do a lot of things um, down in the post. So I think he'll have a spot somewhere. So good luck to Kofi. It was fun watching him for two years. Wish we would have got four. Um, but um, he is a, a player that's not going to be forgotten here. Um, I think Jeremy Warner tweeted it out that he does qualify to have his number and jersey in the rafters because he was a consensus All-American, second team All-American this year, which gets it's, – it's a qualification. So 21 jersey will likely be right next to an 11 jersey for Io. It would be really cool if they could both come back the same night uh, sometime yeah. in the fall. Um for that game highly unlikely because I'm pretty sure Io will be on a team um, right. and playing at that point, but it would be cool to have them both back. I don't expect to see it happen, but um, he was a player that we haven't had at Illinois in a long time. So um, good luck to Kofi. And it was fun for me. Uh, I got to talk to him a couple of times, got to know him a little bit and, and he's just a big goofball and, and a good dude. And, and um, I, I think he's going to have a lot of success. Yeah, I agree. Uh, that's really all the basketball news that came out. We still don't know anything about the assistant coaches. Um, still one spot left. Uh, you got Brad as the head coach, Chester Frazier and Jeff Alexander right now. And, um, that's about it. And I don't really see any rumors floating around of who the other one's going to be. I, I mean, I still think it's crazy that we're now to the end of May and there's still a vacancy on the coaching staff, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, whatever I'm sure they'll figure it out, but um, some, as you said, we've talked about some answers are starting to come across now. So they'll start to figure some things out, I guess. The issue there is the recruiting period starts Tuesday, June 1st is a recruiting period and you don't have your assistant coaches filled. So yeah. we'll see. Um, everyone's talking really highly of Chester and how he's doing. I know I repeated the same thing I said last week, but um, I think that the two guys are, are um, doing what they can. Uh, we'll let you uh, know when they uh, fill that third spot, though. I did see, though, that you on Twitter threw your name into the ring um, as a possibility to <laughs> take one of these coaching vacancies, to which I then responded that I had a <laughs> podcast co-host position going to open up. Uh, have you heard from Josh Whitman or Brad Underwood about uh, you filling a coaching vacancy? I completely forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> I almost spit up my drink when you said that. Uh, I completely forgot. But yeah, um, I'm available. Um, I'm already a university employee, so it'd be an easy transfer, you know. Um, and I would work for probably about 10, 15% of the salary that Brad would yeah, offer. So sure, absolutely. Brad, if you're listening, Josh Whitman, if you're listening, which I know they both are because they love what we have Why to say. Why wouldn't they? Um, I'm available. That's all I got to say. 
what do you bring to the table? Let's just have a mock interview right here. What would you, know, you bring to bring to Brad Underwood's coaching staff? You know, the last month I've just worked my butt off with five-year-old T-ball kids. So if I can handle that, I think I can handle anything. I would give you the job. <laughs> uh, Based on experience alone, I, I have would give zero you the job. basketball coaching experience. Mm, don't bring so. that up. Don't bring that up in your interview. <laughs> um, listeners out there, who do you want to see? Uh, tweet at us, email us. I, I'd like to know what the pulse is of Illini Nation on who they want. I think we're probably going to get a lot, a lot of Roger Powell. I've seen some people calling for Brian Randall, but he's kind of climbing the NBA coaching ranks um out about him oh so that's not happening for all of you that want that to happen i don't think that's happening so if you have a name that you'd like to see um let us know um i'm, I'm really I think mark, mark titus is throwing uh brad stevens name out around again for <laughs> for the illinois jobs so. <laughs> <laughs> oh man what was that 20 that was gross so what 2012 yeah the, the stevens name got thrown out yeah yeah, so not much to not much to say there. So we'll keep you updated though. Um, in football news, there was some football uh, related stuff this week. They released some game times for the first couple games. Um, the Nebraska game, week zero, August twenty. Big is, noon kickoff. Big noon kickoff, twelve p.m. <laughs> Central on Fox. Um, UTSA is a six thirty night game um, at Virginia. This one's a doozy at Virginia, September eleventh. 10 a.m. Central Time. I did not know college football games kicked off that early ever. I thought it was always 11 was the earliest game. Yeah, that's a little bizarre. Why? Why is that? I Does don't anybody know. have a reason for that? If you know, let us know because 10, I, I 10 a.m. No Central Time, which would be what 9 a.m. That's 9 a.m. California. Well, it's no, it's be 9 a.m. Eastern Time. No, it'd be 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Oh, I don't know times at this point i live in eastern time zone and i can't even figure this stuff out 11 a.m okay that's still not as ridiculous but still that's 9 a.m mountain 8 a.m yeah i think robert rosenthal did the whole thing where it's like 3 a.m hawaii time or like 5 a.m hawaii i saw that like yes i don't know why if anyone knows why let us know it's just going to be super weird because that's like that's the middle of college game day like they're halfway through their show and big noon kickoff like doesn't make any sense um, another night game at Memorial Stadium is the Maryland game, the 17th of September, 8 p.m. kickoff, so a late night there. Uh, the Wisconsin homecoming game is one of those either ors. It's either 2.30 or 3 p.m., so afternoon kickoff, Wisconsin. And at Penn State is an 11 a.m. Central time on October 23rd. Was homecoming game, Wisconsin's October 9th. So we got some game times there. Um, the only one that really surprises me is the Virginia 10 a.m., um i'm kind of surprised by the nebraska uh 12 p.m i thought that might be a night game because it is week zero and one of maybe five games going on that week um but i'm assuming the fox time slot trumped any game time like if you can get fox you're going to take fox over a a night game so anything stick out to you there no other than me not knowing how time zones work No, I mean, the Virginia thing is obviously the most is the baffling thing, um, regardless of what it, whether it's 9 a.m. or 11 a.m. Yeah. Uh, in the East, it's still a strange time. Um, but no, not not really. Uh, but at least we get we have some information, though. So that's good. Um, yeah. That Virginia game also is on ACC Network, which I have what I think is one of the premier sports packages on cable and I don't get ACC Network here. So I think people are going to, in central Illinois are going to struggle to even watch that one. So that's something to be aware of. Um, Nebraska games on Fox, Maryland game is on FS1, UTSA, Big Ten Network, and then Wisconsin and Penn State uh, TVA. So we still don't know on that one. It's just good to know that we're trending towards a football season where there's likely going to be a full capacity of fans or at least probably close yeah. to it. I know mm-hmm. Notre Dame just announced this week that they're going to be at full capacity this season. So yeah. Um, we'll have to see, obviously no, nothing's been announced for, for everybody, but that's obviously the trending, the direction we're trending. I know baseball is going to mostly full capacities at this point. So yeah. that's really exciting just yeah. to know that that's going to be happening. And we already have schedules and game times and all that stuff. Yep. Got my season tickets on the East balcony, about two or three rows up. I'm, I'm pumped. Do I have I, to like uh, enter into like a, do I have to enter into like an auction, um, <laughs> to, I only got get... two tickets, so you're going to have to fight someone mm. for it. <laughs> mm. okay. Well, 
I can put up a fight if I really want to. <laughs> I'm excited Cause though, because like I like we've talked about, I left the TV station and like the first thing I did was buy season tickets for football, thinking that there would be some sort of fans there this year, and didn't get to go. So so I'm uh I'm pumped to go uh, as a fan to some football games. I did go to the spring game, but obviously not the same there. So. Um, only other Illini news, I believe, is the men's golf team at the Nationals, and they uh, killed it today. They crushed it today. Um, this was round three, so they played Friday, Saturday, Sunday. There's one more round of stroke play tomorrow on Monday um, of just the top 15 teams, and then it goes to the match play, the team match play after that. So you have to be in the top 15 after today. Then you have to be in the top eight after the final round of stroke play to go to match play, Illinois currently sits in fourth and they are 10 strokes ahead of ninth. So they're in a very good position to make it to match play. Um, They shot two under as a team today, which is the second best score as a team. Um, Oklahoma state and Florida state shot six under as a team. And then Illinois shot two under and NC state is currently two under. Uh, Liberty is four under actually. So there's a couple teams that are sneaking up, but Liberty is, is tied for 19th. So they're way down there. Um, it's out in Scottsdale, Arizona. So uh, a homecoming for Michael Fiegels, the fifth year senior for Illinois. And he's currently tied for fifth overall. So he's playing really well in front of a lot of family and friends. Uh, Michael's a really good dude. Um, all those Illinois men's golfers are, are obviously good guys. Mike Small is just the best of the best, best in the business in college golf. So um, I enjoy following that team. Um, there's been a lot of guys come through there that, that have treated um, WCIA where I uh, used to work and uh, at the station very well. So i uh, happy to see this um, Illinois playing really, really well. Yeah, that's, that's definitely good to see. Um, you know, I know you're a little more connected to it than I am, but it's at least fun to follow, um, you know, just from a distance at least just to see what they're, you know, what they're doing. It's always been a good program, but just to see them having the success this year is definitely really cool. And it always seems like for as good as they are, um, they always like to play it really close and like be really close to the cut line. Like the Big Ten Championship this year, they had to come from behind on like the last four holes to win it. And it always seems like uh, when it gets to this third round here, they're always hovering right about that 15th spot. And then they get like 12th or 13th and they get in. And then they jump up to like seventh or eighth the next day. Like they're always really close. So to see them in fourth and especially be safe for today's cut, but even to be in a good spot for tomorrow and and Monday as well, that's, that's really comforting. Like normally I'm on like pins and needles, like waiting for Fiegel's to birdie or, or um, Jerry G to come in with a birdie or something, but you don't really need that today or, or even tomorrow, just some solid rounds tomorrow and they're on to match play, um, which is, only, only eight teams make it to match play in the whole country. So if you can make it there, it's a successful season. I know that program has their eyes set higher because this was kind of the year they've been building towards, especially when you get all those seniors to come back for another year. So, um, I mean, if you look at the leaderboard, Oklahoma State is 12 under as a team in first. Second place is Oklahoma at one over. So, I mean, that kind of says yeah. what you need to know about yeah. who the title kind of goes through. Um, Oklahoma is the top team in the country, but Oklahoma state is, is playing really well. So, uh, yeah, that's the golf update. I just wanted to get that in there. Cause, um, golf is, is, uh, right at the top of my list. Um, and then let's just update on the NBA playoffs real quick. Um, I don't think any series are over. Are they yet? One. Left? Yeah. One is Milwaukee, Milwaukee they, swept, they swept yeah. Yeah. the heat. Milwaukee swept the heat. Um, and I've been, I've been following a little bit. I've, I've watched a little bit here and there. Um, nothing's really surprising at this point. I guess I was, you know, the talk all year, at least the last few months has been the Knicks and how well the Knicks have played. Um, mm-hmm. And now here they are down three to one to Trey mm-hmm. Young and the, and the Hawks. So um, not that it's necessarily a shock. I mean, it's a four or five matchup. So, you know, that could obviously go either way, but other than that, I mean, it's it's pretty straightforward across the board. Um, I mean, that your sons, your sons, they won today and here on Sunday and tied up two to two in that series with the Lakers. So, man, that's, I, was, I mean, that's the most intriguing series of the entire thing, I think, yeah. just because it's yeah. the Lakers and um, they're the seven seed. So, you know, 
Um, but other than that, I think the first round is pretty straightforward at this point, at least up as the, as at the time we're recording this. Yeah, least. I mean, yeah, we're recording this uh, Sunday. It's about five twenty Central Time, so there are still obviously games to be played Sunday, and and um, uh, not quite in stone yet. But I mean, someone had to get that 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 bad draw that the Suns got. But I just felt oh, so yeah. bad, even though I am, I kind of do root for the Suns. So that might be some bias coming in, but I just felt so bad for that franchise because they haven't had a lot of good the last couple of years. And then you get Chris Paul and you got DeAndre Ayton and Devin Booker, kind of this three headed monster here. And you're the two seed and you look over to the other bench and you got LeBron and AD as the yeah. seventh seed. Like that's, that's a tough draw. Bad luck. <laughs> it's, a, it's a tough draw. I, you know, we'll see if they can pull it off, but uh, yeah, it's, that's definitely not ideal for a team yeah. like that. As of recording, Utah has a 2-1 lead over Memphis. Dallas has a 2-1 lead over the Clippers. Denver and Portland tied. I, I kind of picked Portland in that. I, I like that Portland team better than Denver. Um, 76ers are having their way with the Wizards. 3-0 lead. Logan mentioned the Atlanta leading the Knicks 3-1 in their series. Milwaukee sweeps Miami and Brooklyn a 2-1 series lead over Boston. So that's where we sit with the NBA. I still think... I don't know. Milwaukee looked pretty good, but they were playing the Heat. I still think Boston or Brooklyn comes out of the East. And I still think the West is up for grabs. AD went down. Anthony Davis went down today for the Lakers. So the Phoenix might have a chance in that series now. Um, I, th- I mean, I think they have a chance anyways, but a little bit of a more chance. So I think the West is wide open still. Do you? I agree. I agree. I mean, I think this, I, they're the one seed. I still think the Jazz are probably the favorite out there. Um, unless LeBron and, and AD are able to, you know, put it together and be healthy, you know, but I don't know that that's necessarily going to happen. So no, I do agree. I think it's, I think it's fairly wide open. I say the jazz, but then again, I mean, they're going to go up against Luca potentially here in the second round and I don't know, uh, he can do a lot. So we'll just have to see there too, but I agree. Yeah. I think the East, I think the, the nets are the favorite out in the East, but yeah. that could go a couple different ways as well. Yeah. There's been a couple of good games, but for the most part, it, it's been hard to draw me in. I feel like there's been a lot of more, a lot of blowouts in my eyes. Yeah. I, I don't know if you, you're seeing it the same, but I haven't seen many really good games since uh, the playing games were great. And I was really excited, but yeah, um, there've been, there've only been a couple of games that have really draw drawn my attention. So um, Logan, I got a question for you. Moving Is on this, from NBA. Oh, okay. Go ahead. No, moving on from NBA. Oh, when you were in like junior high, middle school, yeah. What was your favorite TV show? Not like, I know you like Boy Meets World and all that stuff, but like what what did you binge the most? Like what would you put on like to fall asleep or something? Like late at night. To to fall asleep to? To get caught up. To get caught up on everything. What would you, what would you put on at night to get all of your sports news? Oh, oh, I know where you're going with this. Sports Center. Obviously Sports Sports Center. Center. Okay. Sports Center was in my life from practically out of the womb. Sorry, that was a bad question. Bad, bad segue. I didn't know. I <laughs> thought there was a few different directions you were going to go with this question, so I wasn't sure. But yes, Sports Center. Sports Center was definitely Center. where I. I went. mean, we went to school to be sports broadcasters. Sports Center was our dream jobs. It was <clears> on my in car. my house all the time. Yes, yes. So who? Are, who's on the Mount Rushmore of Ooh. Sports Center anchors? Uh, all time, all time Sports Center anchors. Yeah. For me personally, uh, it's Dan Patrick, my boy DP. Yep. It's the late great Stuart Scott. Yep. Um, I'm gonna go Chris Berman for spot uh, number three. I know no that can one be- circles the wagon. Just in terms of historical, okay, he is. He was there at the beginning. He's still there, even though he's technically retired. He's still there, and I'm going to go with your boy Kenny Maine uh, in spot number four. I'm not just saying that because that was the big news out of the sports media world this week. I would yeah. put Kenny Maine in slot number four. Yeah. So those that missed it, Kenny Maine is no longer at ESPN. He anchored his last show. I don't remember what night it was. Um, Monday, earlier, I think. Yeah, I think Monday, Monday or Tuesday of last week. He anchored his last show, and it sounds like it was not 
a good departure. <laughs> no, I don't um, think it was. Reports say that they offered him a 60% pay cut to stay at ESPN. So Kenny Main, no longer at ESPN. I will say, like like you, growing up, Sports Center was on all the time. Um, and Kenny Main was one of the best. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but did he not leave and come back? Or did he just like take a back that. seat or something? I thought he I left Sports Center. Or maybe something. he did. I don't remember where he would have gone. I would look it up, but Craig, I will tell you, my internet is being <laughs> so slow right now. I can't load anything. We should just be fortunate that our stream is still working right now. So that's what I was thinking. Um, maybe I'm making that up, but I felt like he left or did something else and then came back because the last however long he's been back he just hasn't been the same i don't know if it's because i got older and he just wasn't funny or what but but kenny main is definitely top five or ten all-time sports center anchors i he i agree I so agree. to see them basically push him out like that i mean that's so sad espn has doesn't have a great track record of taking care of its long-term employees some Mm -hmm. of them sure yes but there is a list a long list of their um, employees that they have not had great relationships with towards the end yeah um i mean there's a few recent of recent i mean that the whole there's a few golic the whole golic thing wasn't handled very well and trey wingo i don't think was handled very well and i mean there's there's a long list of them but now kenny main is uh that definitely the most the most recent one and it's one of the most bizarre because it kind of happened really quickly. It was just kind of announced yeah. that this is going to be my last week or two weeks or whatever. And then yeah. he was out the door. Yeah. Um, I will preface this. This is Wikipedia. So um, this is where this information is coming from, but it says main returned to sports center on October 15th, 2013 after a five year absence. Okay. So I do remember sports that. Center well, for what a did, while. what did he do? That's what I'm honest. I'm on the page now. I don't, I think he stayed at ESPN. He just had different roles. He just wasn't doing sports center. Okay. He was trying to do other stuff. I do remember that. Um, I do remember when he did return to. Right. um, Right. Sports center, but yeah. um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, um, he was, I I would agree with you on your Matt Rushmore, Um, Dan Patrick, Stuart Scott, but I would go SVP. And that would, that's fair probably kenny main yeah probably kenny main just because of like his early stuff um but yeah i mean he, he's i mean sports center is just not what it used to be and i yeah. i'm kind of on the same page as you is espn's just like i mean how long did it take dan patrick to get espn faces on his show now like they're just yeah. recently coming on his show and he's been gone for probably a decade, probably more, more than a decade. And they're just now getting the mutual respect again from his departure to ESPN. So um, Maine hasn't said what's next. Um, He worked there for 27 years. um, So I don't know if he's hanging it up. I don't know if he's going to try something else, move to a different network or what, but um, just sports center is just not what it used to be. But I just wanted to talk about Kenny Maine a little bit because we both, um, both grew up watching him um, probably every night he was on TV. Uh, did getting, you getting our did you picks. watch the last his last show? I did not. Did you see? I didn't. I didn't watch the whole show, but I did catch the end Aaron Rodgers with the Aaron Rodgers yeah. end. That was uh, he just that was pretty straight great. up dropped an f bomb. Said f <laughs> yeah. you, Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers. We could spend a whole episode about Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers who's been right spending now. OTAs in in Hawaii with uh, his fiance or wife or whatever she is now as well as miles teller who apparently also got punched while he was on his trip in hawaii so i don't know what's going on and then miles teller was tweeting something the other night from hawaii about something football related i don't know if that was just a drunk tweet i don't know if it's still up i don't know i thought the whole thing was bizarre but uh yeah Aaron rogers is like shalane woodley has like grabbed him and like completely twisted him into something that is not who i thought aaron Rodgers was like he's got the long hair and the beard and hiking in hawaii like okay i mean you do you but oh man i don't is he gonna be the packers is he gonna be the packers quarterback week one 
I don't know why he wouldn't be. Yeah, I, I don't I see what's going to happen otherwise. We've talked about it before. I just, I don't know where he's going to go that's going to give him a better chance to win than what the Packers are going to give him. Yeah. I mean, if his goal at this point is to win another Super Bowl, that's that's the best shot he's got. So, yeah. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, that's that that was a whole ordeal as well. Yeah. Final sports <laughs> news. Uh, Cubs are rolling. Uh, half game behind the Cardinals. Cubs lost today. Cardinals lost are down today, big. But yeah. Cardinals are down big, so not going to lose any ground. Cardinals aren't going to gain any ground. So, um, Cubs have been one of the best teams in baseball in May. So uh, this Central race yeah. is going to be uh, going to be an interesting one because I think both teams are are very similar. Cubs are playing well um, despite a lot of their role players being hurt. Um, the, the core four bats are all healthy, but within the last few weeks, they've lost Jason Hayward, Matt Duffy, Jake Marisnik, just lost David Bodie, Nico Horner, Anthony Rizzo has been out of the lineup for the last few days. He's not on the mm-hmm. IL or anything, but he's having some back stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's been out of the lineup and they're still playing really well. So, uh, the bullpen has been holding it together. The rotation has been all right. So if they can keep it up and people come back, they're going to be dangerous. They're going to need to go out and get another pitcher. Yeah. Uh, I, people are already talking about Max Scherzer. Um, same in St. Louis. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he'll be available because the nationals are terrible this year. So, yeah. um, so we'll have to see, but yeah, the Cubs are playing real, really well um, right now. They had a Tyler Maley, Mally, Mally, um, had a perfect game going through like the fifth inning or something today, but they eventually broke that up and scored a run. But yeah, so we'll have to see. Uh, the Cubs are playing really well. Yeah, Cardinals went on a rough stretch, but they've been playing the Diamondbacks, who are playing some of the worst baseball in the league. So they got two wins, but they're getting beat 9-2 uh, today. So they'll take two of three from – the Diamondbacks, then they go to the Dodgers. So the Cubs will probably be in first place by the time we talk next week. It Well, the Cubs have a pretty rough stretch ahead of them too. But it also helps for the Cubs with all these injuries that when their best player can play all over the field. I, the yeah. Chris, Chris Bryant hasn't played third base in like four weeks. I just want He's him. been all over the outfield and at first base. He has he not did. played third base in a long time. He just needs to play 20 games at third base so he can continue. He can keep his third base eligibility in fantasy for me. That's all I ask. I'm play. I think he's already hit that, but play 20 games at third, play 20 in the outfield, play 20 at first, play 20 at catcher, just play 20 games at as many positions as you can. I don't think he's going to lose his third base eligibility, (laughs) but uh, that's been huge because they have had all these. That's the thing. Even before they got hurt, the Cubs had these guys like Matt Duffy and Jake Marisnik that were, you know, playing well than they needed to be in the lineup so the ability to play chris bryant at these different positions you know has been nice so jock peterson's came back he's been hitting the ball well um so we'll have to see how they how they hold up but they have a rough stretch because they have they have a west coast swing where they're going to hit the um padres and giants and padres again and then the cardinals and then so it's it's not going to be easy and then the mets who are not playing great but they're back at the top of the east so um it'll be a fun it'll be a fun june Let's buckle Check up. back with me in a few weeks. Buckle up. It's going to be a fun summer. Yeah. Um, I yeah. think that's all the sports stuff we got today, but we do have a lot of other entertainment stuff that we want to get to. Logan, Craig you're watched be, a movie. You're going to be so proud because I Craig watched, a, watched movie. a movie. A new movie. I watched a new movie and I took notes. Oh my God. Notes so we can Who discuss. Who are you? I'm, Who a good, are I'm you? a good co host here. You're, so. you're the best. First off, um, did you watch this at home? Yes. Or did you go to the theater? No, watch it at home. Okay, watch it, it at home. Okay. Yes. Um, do you okay. want to take the lead on the the movie segment? We can. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. Go for it. Um, go for it. Two. There were two big movies that came out this weekend. Uh, kind of opening up theaters again. I mean, theaters have kind of been open, and King Kong versus Godzilla came out a few weeks ago. That kind of really jump started it. But uh, Memorial Day weekend had two big releases. One of them was. Uh, a Quiet Place 2, the John Krasinski uh, follow-up to his movie from a couple years ago that released this weekend. I did see that. I will talk about that here in a minute. Um, but the other one uh, that came out this weekend was Cruella, which is the uh, the next in line of the Disney live-action remakes, so to speak, reboots or whatever you want to call them, uh, starring Emma, Emma Stone as Cruella or Estella, um, as she is known for most of the movie. Um, as well as Emma Thompson. So that is the movie that Craig saw. I saw both of them, but Craig saw Cruella (laughs) and he apparently took notes. So I would love to hear your thoughts and the notes that you took about this movie. I am super excited about this. (laughs) So first, 
let's do the generic like no spoiler reviews yep. for people okay. and then we'll put us the, the disclaimer okay from there on out we'll do the spoiler this um spoilers okay. ahead let's do so it. overarching i thought it was fantastic um it, it was about what i expected um it's it's not a kid's cartoon version it, this is um i don't know that kids can't watch it but there are some uh topics and, and storylines that, that are a little darker um that your five and six year olds might not like but like once you get up to like 10 12 i think they would probably be fine um but i, I mean i was entertained the whole time um there was a lot of twists and turns that ultimately ultimately came back together that, that tied up those those loose ends um and i thought emma stone was great um i thought um her henchman especially horace was yep. fantastic <laughs> <laughs> about halfway yep. through the movie uh christy goes i recognize him is that the guy from richard jewel yeah I was like no I, no Paul walter hauser I yeah. like, no way so i pulled up the imdb i was like holy cow <laughs> it is um he, but that yeah. dude just sidebar that dude is a fun follow on twitter because he's just like this huge like just movie buff like he just mm. he just loves movies and he just wants to be in a movie so he's yeah. always talking about movies that he wants to be in and actors he wants to work with yeah. and he's just a, he's great paul walter hauser yeah. but anyway go on um there aren't i mean there, there are a couple but there aren't as many like moments that tie into 101 dalmatians um it, it's it's very much its own separate thing so there, there are a couple like names of characters that you'll you'll recognize and be like, oh, that's that's them. But as far as like storylines, it, it's completely its own thing. And I, I, I loved it. I thought it was I thought it was really, really good. Yep. Your no, turn. I, I agree. No, I agree. Um, I really enjoyed the movie. Um, it was this movie was and somebody else mentioned it on Twitter to me. And I agree. That's the exact thought I had. This is more of a like 70s caper film um that takes that has a disney character involved um it didn't even feel like that much of a disney movie to me for like right. the first hour and a half right. because she doesn't even go by cruella right um this isn't like a spoiler or anything i mean her name uh, in the, the lore or whatever they go with her name is estella um and then she eventually you know takes on the moniker of cruella um but so it's like to me it just didn't even feel like a disney movie yeah. and you talked about you know who this movie is for and i agree with you it's not for younger kids um it's also not for like every adult that like has wants yeah. nothing to do with like you and you and i are kind of in like the perfect wheelhouse where like we appreciate those kind of movies too yeah um so like for us like i think it was i think i enjoyed the heck out of this movie yeah um i know my parents it, are planning on going and seeing it with my brother and i don't know that my parents are gonna like it my if, brother will but i don't think my if you will. are i mean if you're familiar if you're familiar with 101 Dalmatians, either the animated movie from whenever that came out, the 70s mm -hmm. or whatever, um, or the one that they did in 1996 with Glenn Close and Jeff Daniels, which I actually watched a couple nights ago before I saw this, just, you know, just to kind of watch it again, because I hadn't seen it probably since 2002. Yeah. Um, if you're familiar with both of those, I, you'll, I don't think you'll have any issues with this movie, but it is different. It's, it's a different tone. Um, yeah. has a lot of music, like a lot, a lot of seventies, eighties rock music. Like it's, you know, it's, it's just different. Um, I just really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, and as far as, you know, Disney's has a long history, the last, you know, couple or 10 or so 10 plus years of remaking their animated movies into live action movies. Um, and as far as those movies go, I think this is honestly one of the best they've done. Yeah. um you know overall i think that it's just i thought it was really well done emma stone was great in the role i really enjoyed her i liked emma thompson too it's crazy that they can make a character more hated than cruella Deville. um <laughs> yeah because yeah. i mean let's be honest the character kills dogs to use it for um yeah. clothing so like that's i don't know i mean it's got a different vibe to it it's like you have yeah. to understand going into this this is what this movie is if you're familiar right. with her they make her to be more of a, you know, not I me. Mean, she is kind of an anti-hero. Um, but uh, I, yeah, as I said, I really, I really enjoy yeah. this movie. Yeah. So getting into my notes, that was my overarching thing. Oh yes. It's funny that you is this going to be the, are we going to go spoilers now or. Yeah. We'll, we'll put the disclaimer now. We are okay. going to get more into the movie. So if you have not seen Cruella or if you t simply don't care to hear spoilers, there are going to be spoilers from here on out. So 
buzz, 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 spoiler alert. Um, my first note, and it's funny that you just mentioned something in your little review. My first note is the soundtrack is absolutely amazing. And I wrote down like, you know, it was great. You, you had feeling good. Should I stay or should I go one way or another? Yeah. Uh, come together. She's a rainbow. These boots are made for walking time of the season and car wash. Like every yeah. time a song came on, I was like, I just want to like <laughs> sing along. Like this music is awesome. Yeah. It, it, I don't know if it proves a point that I make, but I think a lot of movies have success based on not necessarily the plot or like just something to keep people interested. And so because they were playing good music, I was like, I, I can get down with this. This is fun. So that was my first point was the soundtrack is awesome. Every song they played was fantastic. The twist completely caught me off guard. The mother daughter thing never I, I had I not even it entertained either. it. So the twist completely threw me. That, that was one of those that after I leave the theater, I think to myself, how did I not see yeah. that? Yeah. Like it was clearly in front of me. Yeah. Like they they play it off early where you think the big twist is going to be that she was the one that called the dogs. Like that happens early on, like kind of super early in the storyline where crew or um, the Baroness. whatever her name was baroness yes was the one that blew the whistle and you know she was the one that killed the mom yeah but then they have the bigger reveal later and yeah i did not see that coming and afterwards i i was like how did i not see that coming like that just and the baroness has know. her like lead um security guy who's yeah. the guy from sherlock holmes is how i remember him um i know him from kingsman but yes go oh on. kingsman as well yeah kingsman as well yeah. yeah um and you see a moment where he like he recognizes Cruella. Like he knows who she is, but he doesn't say anything. Yeah. And then you find out later why, because Baroness told him to yeah. get rid of Cruella. So he's like, well, I can't really say anything because she's supposed to be dead. Yeah. Um, and all that. So, I mean, there was just so much, like you said, that, that we should have picked up on to realize that they are more connected and mother daughter as opposed to whatever. Um, yeah. And then immediately after the movie ended, Christy made this point and I completely agree someone's going to win some awards for fashion and costume. I agree. Cause I mean, and yeah. like, I, that's all I can say is just, everything it was really good. It was like, it was like a fashion show. Yeah. I mean, that's the general theme of who Corella is. I mean, the storyline is that she is a, you know, she's in fashion. That's why she wants the dogs to begin with. Yeah. So, you know, when you're doing that kind of movie, you have to be on top of your game with it. And they were, I mean, that yeah. was, it was fantastic. Yeah. I, that was really good as well. I agree. As we were, as the credits were rolling. And right as she said it, the fashion or costume person's name popped up and I said it and she was like, oh, you know them? I was like, no, I just saw it on the screen. <laughs> She's like, how do you know who the fashion guy is? Like, I just saw it on the credits. It, it says it, it, it <laughs> um, says it right there. So yeah, that, that was really good. And then my last good note, um, this is just Horace. I, I kind of already touched on it. He just, yeah. he had me laughing the whole time. Everything yeah. he said was, was really funny. So yeah. um, those four things, the soundtrack, the mother daughter twist was one of the best twists, uh, fashion costume and Horace were my top four. Like, this is what really got me. Like, I loved every, every bit of that. I love it. I, agree. I do have some bad though. And it's yeah, just, there, it's really there's just some. one. There's a big I, one. It might be the same as yep. what you said. <laughs> the fake dogs, the digital oh, dogs. That's not where I was going to go with it, oh, but okay. go on. The digital dog, like. I don't yeah. know if there were any real dogs used. There's three Dalmatians. Um, Cruella, Estella has a dog, and Horace has a dog. And they all looked fake to me. Yeah. And it was very, very blatantly obvious that they were CGI'd, and it was awful. Yeah. I didn't notice that as much, but yeah, I mean, it, it was obvious at times. Yeah, for sure. I agree. Especially, I the, like especially the Dalmatians. That, to okay. me, they were, they seemed See, a I thought, I thought um, her dog buddy was the most obvious okay yeah that that makes sense i probably wasn't thinking about it at the time but yeah no i think from the dog perspective um and one of my other friends made a comment about this after he watched it too uh and, and they kind of correct it later on i just didn't i didn't love how they made the dogs the villains yeah. at the beginning of the movie the dalmatians yeah. because you know in the original movies the dalmatians are cute and cuddly and like they're the stars of the movie and that you know they're the 
that's what the movie's about. And then yeah. all of a sudden we turn them into like villains of the movie. And we learned a little later that that's not necessarily the case, but um, yeah. still, I didn't love that. No, the, the big takeaway, the big negative for me is it was two hours and 15 minutes long. Yeah, which that, was, that, that was my other 45 one. minutes longer than it probably needed to be. Um, I remember, I distinctly remember um, check th- reaching a point in the movie where I thought, okay, this is probably winding down. And I knew going into it, I knew what the wrong time was. I knew it was yeah. over two hours long. And I remember thinking, oh, okay, we're probably nearing the end of this. And I looked down at my phone and it, it had been an hour and a half. And I thought, oh yeah. my God, okay. So it was, yeah, it, the, but it's movies in 2021. I mean, that's, they're always too long. Um, yeah. So that's like a critique you can have for just about anything. But this one, it's a, it didn't need to be two hours and 15 minutes long. That was just, yeah. that was unnecessary. Um, but that, that was really my biggest critique of it. Um, I just, I really enjoyed the movie. Um, as I said, in terms of the live action remakes, this, this is, and I've said this on probably on our show, I've said it on other places, I've said it on Twitter, I've sold the world. This is the direction Disney should have gone from the very beginning when they wanted to do live action remakes, mm-hmm. bar none. Like we, sh- at this point, we shouldn't have gotten uh, a, an Aladdin remake. We shouldn't have gotten um, a Lion King remake. We should have gotten stories about these villains. To me, like a Cruella movie, a Maleficent. Like we had those ones. Like that's the direction they should have gone, in my opinion. And Male- the first Maleficent, especially, and this one, I think are two of the better ones that they've done. And not to, not to take anything away from some of these other movies. I enjoyed Aladdin. I enjoyed The Lion King for the most part. Um, and some of these other, other movies too. But the villain, like these villains are such iconic characters in these stories. And I've always thought, since they've started doing these, that this is what they should have been doing. We should be getting an Ursula movie instead of a, a new little mermaid, you know, um, we should get one about, you know, the, the queen from snow white. We should get one about scar and Jafar, like Hades from Hercules. Like those are the stories that I would like to see as opposed to just shot for shot remakes of beauty and the beast. Give me more Gaston. Give me, you know, you know, stuff like that. That's yeah. what I think they should have done from the beginning. Not necessarily like a origin story, maybe, or whatever, but I really enjoyed this one. I thought Emma Stone was the right person for the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought everything about it, I, I really, I really enjoyed. Yeah, we kind of did the same thing that you did. We, I paused it at one point, think of something dog related, had to take the dog out or feed the dog or something. And I was like, well, it's probably almost done. And I paused it and it, we had like 40 minutes left. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Holy cow. I, had, um, I think it was, thing. it might've been like right after the fire. Cause we were like, the fire is like the climax. Yeah. I think it's probably where it was. Yeah. There, so. And it just kind of slowed down and I just thought, okay, yeah, this seems like we're about towards the end of it. And I looked down and I'm like, Oh no, yeah. we're still a ways yeah. away from this. So yeah. overall though, I definitely, definitely enjoyed it. Yep. All right. You want me to go first or do you want to go first? Go ahead. You got it. 4.4. 4.4 from Craig. That's very high, actually, now that I think about it. It is a little high. I'm giving it a four. It has a it is a 4.0 from Logan on the Loki scale. All right. Um that's that's where I'm at. Um that's I'm gonna go ahead you. real quick. I'm gonna real quick talk about the second movie that came out this weekend because this is one that I know you should watch, but I know you probably won't watch it for a while. So yeah. Um, and I'm not going to talk about a ton of spoilers with this because it's kind of different talking about spoilers with like original horror movies than it is with, you know, Disney movies. But A Quiet Place 2 um, was the other big release that came out this weekend. Um, if Craig, did you see the first A Quiet Place? Yes. Okay. So did you enjoy the first A Quiet Place? I know you're not a horror person. Yeah, I'm, but, I, I do not like scary movies, but. But I did don't... you, did you enjoy the first A Quiet Place movie? I don't know if we talked about this on the show or off the show. Um, I was so I knew it was a horror or a scary movie and I was like on the edge of my seat like all right I got to be prepared because I don't like to be scared in movies and not be prepared but I wasn't scared at all I thought it was a, I thought it was a really good movie so yes I saw it this, and I liked it and I used the word horror a little too broadly this these aren't horror movies these are and I've heard John Krasinski talk about it in interviews these are more these are more movies just about a family um, that take place in this world that kind of has monsters. So, I mean, it's it's not a horror movie. It's more of a thriller suspense type of movie. 
Um, but if you are a person that watched the first A Quiet Place and you enjoy the, the first A Quiet Place, you will absolutely love A Quiet Place Part Two. Um, it was as good, if not better, than the first one, um, in my opinion. And I've heard that come from other people as well. Um, the first five minutes of the movie, um, this isn't really a spoiler because it's also in like a lot of the trailers too, but the first five minutes of the movie um, take you back to what happened bef- the, to start the whole thing. So um, you see what, what's going on when these monsters or whatever they are come. And so th- those first like five to eight minutes are really intense. And it's a like, that's a really good sequence. Um, it was just, that was like incredible filmmaking right there um from from him and his his crew and emily blunt is great as well in the movie um killian murphy uh joins the joins us the cast um but it's the kids to me that are really great in this one uh the the girl melissa millicent simmons simons um she's terrific in this one um noah jupe just does a lot of yelling and screaming which is fine he's still good in it but it's the girl that really um kind of carries a lot of this movie um, so I, I really enjoyed A Quiet Place Part Two. Um, if you haven't seen, or if you've seen the first one and you love the first one, you will definitely love this one as well. This one is only in theaters right now. Yeah. Um, it will be on Paramount Plus, I believe, in July. I think it's like 45 days after the theatrical window. It'll be on Paramount Plus, and then eventually it'll be available to buy and rent and all that other stuff too. But uh, if you are looking, and I said this on Instagram, if you are looking for the right time to go back to the theaters, this is the right movie to do it for. And I'm, I'll say that to you and I'll say that to anybody else that's listening and to watch this, watching us talk about this stuff right now, if you are looking for the right time, because I know there's plenty of people out there that haven't been to a theater in well over a year. Um, so if you're one of those people, if you're looking for the right time, if you, if you feel like it's safe to do so, this is the movie to see. Um, hmm. I know theaters still aren't filling it up to capacity. Like when I, you know, when I get on and buy my ticket, it's still blocking off seats around me. So it's not like you're in there, you know, rubbing elbows with other other people. Um, obviously, if you're going on a Friday or Saturday night, it could be a little busy in the lobby. But um, this is this is the movie to go see in the theaters. So absolutely, um, this gets a four point five from me. Ding, and uh, definitely need to go check this one out. All right. So there you go. There's a All quiet right. place part two. Uh, I have Paramount Plus, so july <laughs> in july <laughs> or go to the theater or go to the theater yeah go by yourself yeah. on a tuesday it'll be fine yeah. trust me it's worth it you'll jump a lot that's what i used to do um because same at, at the um at the tv station i had wednesday thursday off so i would go hit the matinees on wednesdays and thursday afternoons if i wanted to go see a movie yeah. when it's five bucks instead of 15 bucks so yeah this one and i will say again go back to it this one doesn't have as many the first one I think had a few kind of cheesy, not cheesy, but like unnecessary jump scares. Um, this one had jump scares, but like they were, they were really like well done and like well deserved. I jumped a lot, but I'm also just like really jumpy. Great, me too. I'm I'm also not a horror movie person, like <laughs> like you, like you said, like that's yeah. just not my thing. Um, yeah. Get Out is one of my favorite movies of the last like ten or so years, mm-hmm. but other than that in a quiet place but again it's not really a horror movie but yeah yeah, go see a quiet place part two or watch it on paramount plus when it comes available in july (laughs) a lot of movie talk i like it um moving to tv though i started one of logan's favorite tv shows to be i don't know what that i don't know what that was he yells chloe a lot you cut out he yells Um, chloe a lot oh okay on the show um so I finished Survivor. I think we talked about that on the show. I finished Survivor as my first pandemic binge. And I have moved on to 24, the original 24. So I finished one season and I'm like five episodes into the second season. I did not realize that it aired in like 2000, 2001. Yeah. It's so old. <laughs> I started yeah. watching the first episode and I was like, this video is like not great quality. What's the deal? And I looked it up. I was like, holy cow, this is 20 years yeah. old. It is. Um, but I I blew through season one. It probably took me four or five days to get through the first season. Um, so, yeah. Why, why is it one of your favorite shows? We didn't talk about that. So, um, just kind of, uh, I mean, I don't know. I really enjoyed the show from the beginning, but that's not really, I mean, my family started watching it. We didn't jump on it right away. I think we probably started watching like season four or five, but it was just a show that we just watched every week. Um, 
was one of those that before you had DVR, you had to like have a, you know, had to record on a, on a VHS tape. And yeah. if he screwed it up, then you missed the episode and all that stuff. Uh, but no, I mean, we jumped on it then. Um, and then I watched it all the way through till it was done. I was in college. I remember um, this. So when we were in college, Hulu was just starting, but Hulu was a free product. And it was essentially, it wasn't a place for original programming. It was a place where you could go the next day and watch yes. shows that were on Fox and NBC and ABC and that stuff. So yes. um, I wouldn't be able to catch, you know, 24 when it aired that night, I would watch it on Hulu the next day, that type of stuff. So watch it through college. Um, and then after it aired, I went back and watched it on Netflix. And it's honestly, I think it's one of the very first shows that I truly binged. And I remember my brother making a big deal about it. And I think both of us did. We watched like the first season within like, I think my brother watched the season of 24 within like 24 hours or something like that. Like <laughs> that's like, like impossible. I'm, well, no, it's not have to watch it from start to finish. He did it, it. Well, no, they're only actually like 42 minutes. So <laughs> technically you have 15 minutes, you know, between regardless. Um, <laughs> he slept for like two hours that day. I, I don't remember, <laughs> but it, it's something, I mean, it's something ridiculous like that. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I just, I loved it from the moment I started watching it. Uh, I didn't really get into the reboot when they brought it back a few years ago with yeah. Corey Hawkins. Yeah. I tried um, to, I didn't really watch that. And it's a show that I would love to go back and watch again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as I said, I, I started, I watched it season four or season five or whatever through the end. And then I went back and watched it all from the beginning, um, when it came out on Netflix, when Netflix was a thing and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I just, I've always loved 24 um it was just jack bowers just a professional badass and uh those those clock that clock man yeah that's intense yeah yeah it's just a, it's a great show yeah season one hooked me like quick season two eh, i mean i'm watching i'm still very interested but so far season one is was better than season two so who's your favorite Hopefully. character not named jack bauer so far uh, i don't know I don't know. I'm just curious. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'd have to think about that. I don't, I mean, I remember some of them. I don't remember what seasons they're in. I did but... not know, um, I don't know how to say her first name. El Elisha, Elisha? Cuthbert? Cuthbert. Uh, I did yeah. not know she was Elisha in that. Cuthbert. Yeah. yeah. I did not know she His was daughter. in that. His daughter. daughter, yeah. 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 Uh, it's a good well, cast. It's, yeah. a, it's a good cast, yeah. Yeah. Um, I did not Protozoa. Like... Protozoa, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I forgot I texted you that. Yeah, Protozoa uh, from Xenon on disney channel is in season two and it took me like less than an episode and i texted logan he's like i didn't even know he I was in didn't it remember he was in that. <laughs> um i i will say i hated um president palmer's wife in season one okay hated her hated her okay so we'll see how it goes i'm gonna keep watching obviously on my uh downtime but we do have one more thing we want i want to get to real quick i saw it this week on oh. twitter Saw oh. it this week on Twitter, and I tweeted oh, that we were yes, going to talk yes, about it. Yes. Um, I think this week was National Burger Day. Yeah, the 28th was National Burger Day. So FanDuel tweeted out a burger bracket that I want to run through real quick, and I'll fill it out for us. So we'll just go down the bracket. First matchup is Shake Shack, the one seed, versus Dairy Queen, the 16. I got Shake Shack all day. I do as well. All right. We'll go to the other side. Five guys, the two seed. And Fuddruckers, the 15. Five guys. Obviously, five guys. Five guys. Three seed. Wendy's gets the three seed against the 14, Steak and Shake. I love Wendy's. <laughs> Used to love Steak and Shake. I haven't been to a Steak and Shake I in, since I was in college. So, uh, Wendy's. Wendy's all day. Shout out, Carbondale. Shout um, out, Carbondale. Yeah, I, Steak and Shake has also lost its luster for me. Uh, yeah. I don't know what it is. I, I don't know. I'm not sure, but yes, Wendy's the four seed or three seed advances. Four seed is in and out. Have you had in and out one time? Okay. And 13 seed is white castle. I've had white I've, castle one time. I've had white castle probably twice. So and I, <laughs> white castle is my least favorite fast yes. food place ever. So no, in and out. Definitely in and out. Okay. Uh, moving on to the five seed Whataburger. Have you had Whataburger? I've never had Whataburger. Have you had checkers? The 12th I seed? have had checkers. So if that automatically how, qualifies yeah. a 12, five upset, then I guess I have to go checkers, but I was going to say, how uh, are you going about this? I, well, I don't know. I've never been able to grace Whataburger with my presence. So 
I guess I have to go to 12. I have to go with checkers. Unfortunately, there's the 12 sorry. Pot. There's always one. There's always one. So sorry to all the Texas <laughs> people um, that are cursing at me, uh, but I've never been to a Whataburger. So I'm going to go with checkers, I guess, unfortunately. Okay. I'll please all you Texans. I'm going to go with Whataburger. Great had it once and okay. it was delicious that's enough enough to qualify uh this one was a tough one for me the six seed is jack in the box and the 11 seed is sonic i've had jack in the box maybe maybe once or twice um i mean i've had sonic several times i'll go jack in the box but that I, it won't matter they're not going to go very far <laughs> either way. <laughs> I mean, it's only a 16 restaurant bracket, so it's not yes. it's not that in-depth. Um, I just told Christy this when I showed her this earlier this week. If there is one fast food place I could get in Champagne and I got to pick, it would be Jack in the Box. It's really? lo- low-key. Well, now they're getting, ev- they're getting everything now, so there's not a lot that they don't have yet. I know. Uh, so Jack in the Box moves on. Uh, seven seed Culver's, 10 seed Burger King. I feel like this is a blowout. Culver's yes. by a mile. And then the eight nine is McDonald's, and they have See, Carl's Jr. on the graphic, but we all know it as Hardee's. Hardee's. See, here's my thing with McDonald's. Um, I don't like. I don't know what I'm supposed to be going off of here because I always get like a double cheeseburger. I don't get a quarter yeah. pounder or a Big yeah. Mac. Like yeah. I get a McChicken, McDouble, double cheeseburger, chicken nuggets. Like that. I don't get those other burgers. So yeah, I don't really know how to go off of that. Um, for that reason, because I don't really get the quarter pounders and that stuff, I'll probably just go Hardee's, but I don't know. Yeah, I get. I mean, I, mean, I get the double cheeseburger at McDonald's more than anything else in the world, so I guess I have to choose that. That makes more sense. I'll the go McDonald's, McDonald's, the McDonald's burgers are definitely different. Like the quarter pounder burgers are are actually not bad, and I think all Hardee's burgers are the same. So I'm going to yeah. go McDonald's because I do get the quarter pounder sometimes, and it's it's I'll, a little I'll go bit with, better. I'll go with McDonald's simply on the fact that it's probably what I've had the most. So yeah. we'll just, even though I know it's not the best on this list, I'll go with that anyway. So now they go up against Shake Shack. How often have you had Shake Shack? Cause it's not in uh, the Midwest very often. Uh, it's in Chicago. Okay. Um, I've had it a few times in Chicago. It's definitely a, a winner over McDonald's. For oh, me, for, sure. for sure. I've had it twice and both yeah. times were at the same exact restaurant in Times Square, New York city. <laughs> um, I think I've had it in Times Square yeah. actually. Um, when I was going to Cubs convention um, in Chicago, a couple years, every year, usually for lunch one day, we would get Shake Shack. Yeah. Um, but I have been to the one in Times Square. I have, a, I have a story about that Shake Shack. I will tell you off the record. All right. Um, but I'm going to go Shake Shack. All right. So we're McDonald's. both going Shake Shack to the um, four final restaurants. Um, and then that's the final four, Greg. Well, final four. Trademarks, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um. Five guys and Culver's for both of us. The two versus the seven. It's five guys for me. Okay, so here's here's the thing. I've been thinking about this, this exact matchup. Oh. Culver's, quite honestly, is probably my favorite fast food restaurant on the planet. Wow. More so than anything else. Okay. I will choose Culver's over just about anything. But I think it's the combination of everything there. It's the food. It's, it's just, it's a lot wow. of it. If I'm going just based on the burger though, I'm going base. Bur- I'm going burger. That's how I I'm basing. Go, my I know I, I was getting there. I okay. was getting there. Okay. Okay. Based on strictly just the burger though, as much as I love Culver's and I think they're drastically under seated, I will go with five guys. Yes. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. I agree Glad we're on the same page. Okay. Um, we got Wendy's and I picked Jack in the box. I forgot what you picked. I picked Jack in the Box, but okay. Wendy's. Wendy's yeah, all I think day. Wendy's. Yeah, Wendy's is they're underrated, man. I mean, I know there are three seed here, but their burgers are really good. Wendy's and Culver's are my two go-to fast food restaurants mm. around here, at least. McDonald's yeah. on occasion, just because yeah. I know it's so much cheaper than the rest of them. But yeah, um, but yeah. So I've got In and Out and Water Burger. I think. Did you go White Castle and Checkers? No, no, I have in and out, in and, and, and out, out checkers. checkers, and I'll okay. go in and out here. So, I did not like in and out at all. I thought it was very. I thought it was similar to Steak and Shake. Like, it yeah. didn't do anything for me. Waterburger, on the other hand, my Waterburger story is a story that I could tell at a different time. Both in and out and Waterburger were on my Phoenix, Arizona trip. Um, so I'm going Waterburger. 
So my final four is Shake Shack, Five Guys, Wendy's, and Whataburger. You've got Shake yeah, Shack. That, that quadrant is just not – that's not good for me personally because I just haven't – like I've had In-N-Out once. I've had White Castle maybe twice. I've had Checkers maybe twice. True. Never had Whataburger. I mean, True. Shake Shack, Dairy Queen, Hardee's, McDonald's, Five Guys, Burger King, Culver's, <laughs> Wendy's, Steak and Shack, Steak and Shake, and Sonic are all burgers I've had True. numerous times in my life. So True. I'm going to get a burger for dinner now. I know I am. <laughs> I just had it for lunch. Um, you've got Steak, Shake Shack, Five Guys, Wendy's, and In and Out. All right. Correct. Yeah. But I'm all chalk. Yeah. You're I'm all, all chalk. chalk. I'm going Shake Shack over Whataburger. Is it Shake Shack or, or in and out for you? Shake, it's Shake Shack. Okay. And then Five Guys versus Wendy's for both Wendy's. of us. You've got Wendy's over Five Guys, the upset. No, I didn't say oh, that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I didn't, I right. didn't say that. I thought no. you were picking Wendy's. Um, Let's break it down here. So we both got Shake Shack in the finals. And it's Five Guys or Wendy's. Logan, if, for those not watching YouTube, Logan is in deep thought right now. I mean, again, strictly the burger, I still have to go five guys. If that is what we're doing here, it is five guys all the way. But if it's so, a restaurant as a whole, you would go Wendy's. Yeah, I like this five other guys, options. Five guys has chicken sandwiches, don't they? I think so. And they also have like hot dogs, but I've never gotten yeah, anything I'll, there yeah. other than a burger. Yeah, same. Um, but like those other restaurants, I have other options and I like some of their other sides and stuff. Um, but no, strictly just the burger. This is Shake, Shake Shack and five guys all day for me. Yeah, I would agree. All right, so we're both going the one two seed. Are yeah. we, we going to go chalk here? You're wearing the green for Shake Shack. <laughs> Is that why you're wearing green? No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> um, I'm not going to go chalk. I'm not. Woo! I'm going to. I'm going to go five guys again, based on just the burger alone. It's the best burger you can get. I wasn't expecting that. It's the best burger you can get. I love Shake Shack. I love the shakes. Love the fries. I love the burgers, but. In terms of just a burger, going five guys. Okay. I was not expecting that. I was expecting you to go to Shake Shack, and I was going to be like, you know, like Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp, like never agree. Oh. Like we were going to oh. – I was going to go the other way, but we're gonna we're both going to go five guys, I guess, because five so guys is my favorite thing. burger spot of all time. Here's the thing. I do love Shake Shack, um, but other than really McDonald's, I haven't had that many burgers on that left on the left side of the bracket. So it's hard for me to put anything over Shake Shack. All right. Um, Fair enough. So I've only had it a handful of times, whereas I've had five guys countless amount of times. I don't get five guys as much here because there are two locations here. And to be quite honest with you, neither of them are very great locations for me to like, just go in and get a burger and leave. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't get it that much. And they're both like way, you know, on the far end, other end of town. So that's why we usually get like Culver's most of the time if we're yeah. getting like a burger. Yeah. Um, but if I'm, if you're asking me what is the best burger, which is what this exercise is, I have to go five guys. We're on the same page. Five guys is clearly because we were wearing the same shirt. Tonight, so <laughs> Five guys is my um, favorite fast food. I don't even consider five guys fast food. Um, it's more I think it's absolutely me. fast food. It um, doesn't have a drive through Exactly. Well, it's not some fast of them food do, probably. Um, I've never been to one that has a drive through but either or five guys is my favorite burger that you can order and like get it fairly quick. So yeah, five guys is our burger bracket winner. Um, I like doing this. I, I, we fun. should do, we should do more of this. <laughs> we should. <laughs> I like we're, these, we're, uh, yeah, absolutely. These brackets. I know we've each sent each other multiple. <laughs> A lot. Um, a lot of them, <laughs> like fast food restaurants, um, Disney movies, like all that stuff. So maybe throughout the summer, we'll do a couple more so we can fill out some of our, our content here. Uh, there are a couple sports things that I didn't get to that I forgot to write down. Um, fellow, not fellow, because I'm not one, but your local Indiana, Indi, Indiana native, not native, Indiana resident, Logan Lee. It was the Indianapolis 500 today. It was. I was not there. <laughs> um, for those that didn't watch, Elio Castro Neves uh, wins his fourth. He is the fourth driver to win four Indy 500, which is the most ever. Um, I thought it was funny. I'm going to pat myself on the back here. He won, and I saw his age, and I was like, is Elio Castro Neves the Tom Brady of IndyCar? 
like 46 years old, went in the race, his fourth. And in his post-race interview, someone asked him what it's like. He's like, I don't know if it's a good comparison, but Tom Brady just won the Super Bowl. Phil Mickelson just won the golf tournament. So us old guys can still do it. So I was like, <laughs> I'm on to something. I don't know much <laughs> racing, but I'm on to something there. Proud of you. Well, it was fun. Proud I watched I watched from start to finish. I always watch the Indy That's 500. Good. So I do fun. sometimes. I did not today. We were out doing some stuff in the yard, so I didn't yeah. really get a chance to watch much of it. But uh, yes, that did happen today, and he did win. So you are correct. I didn't know if they like, shut, down, LEO. shut down the whole state, so I didn't know if you could – you no. were able to do anything. So the only other sports thing is um, I touched on it last week. Ch- Chelsea made it to next year's champions league, but they won this year, baby champions league. My first, you were asking about my Chelsea apparel or flag. My first Chelsea apparel is on its way. Oh, champions great. league, champions league t-shirt. <laughs> How long have you been a Chelsea supporter? Um, the day they um, signed Christian Pulisic, oh. uh, which was, I think January of 2019. So a little over two years uh, when they signed the American, uh, the best American uh, on the national team, Christian Pulisic. I was like, you know what? I'm going to give it a try. And like that weekend they played at 5 a.m. Champagne time. And I woke up and watched and I don't, if I'm home or if I'm around a TV or my phone, like I'm watching, I watch every, I watch every match. So wow, I've I've jumped on. Yeah. It's uh, dedication. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, have anyone to really talk soccer with. So I haven't really like told many people, but I've tweeted about it all the time and all that stuff. So I just, just Andy Olson at uh, WCIA now, he uh, he's also a, a Premier League fan. So for those that don't know what the Champions League is, it's basically um, say like, um, what can I put it into American terms? Like in the NCAA, like it's basically the NCAA tournament like different conferences and different leagues. So you have La Liga, you have um, Premier League, you have Series A, like like all of the the different leagues in Europe send their top teams into the Champions League. So you're playing other other champions. That's what, I, not not a good description, but it's you did a great job. <laughs> yeah, um, it's the <laughs> biggest club tournament. Um, it's the biggest soccer tournament other than the World Cup, which is international. So it's the biggest club tournament you can win. So it's been a crazy season because fired our Chelsea fired their manager mid-season, and they were in like ninth. Um, who Frank Lampard, who played at Chelsea, and then they hired this other guy, and he takes them to the Champions League championship. So it was a fun, fun day yesterday, winning the Champions League, and only my second year as a Chelsea fan. So. I'm really happy for you. <laughs> I really am. Um, that's all I've got. Um, Logan's video just went away for a second. <laughs> um, don't forget to, to stick around for the blooper from when we first both first joined the Zoom call, which is how we record this. Uh, it, it's coming up in just a few seconds after we wrap it up. But um, I don't have anything else. Uh, Logan, do you have anything else that you would like us to touch on? I don't believe so, no. We've had a full week this week. So, uh, no, I think I'm good. All Go right. Chelsea. <laughs> it's a little bit of a break now. International oh, time. Oh, right. right. Um, Premier League's over. Made it to the Champions League for next year. So, so soccer's, soccer's kind of on the back burner for a little bit. Uh, baseball talk. Um, hopefully, we have an Illinois assistant coach to talk about next week. Uh, but, but we'll figure something out. Nothing on the rundown yet. But uh, we'll figure something out. And uh, we'll break it all down for you. For Logan Lee. I am Craig Choate. This is No One Asked Us. We'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs> what is happening? What is happening? <laughs> I'll go change. <laughs> No.